we're talking about demand, and we, we st I think at the end of class last time we were talking about, well, let's think about a polar case where each person is going to decide how much of a good to buy, and in particular a case where they only buy zero or one. It's called a discrete choice model, and this is the simplest discrete choice model is whether you either do or you don't. Right? It's just yes or no. That's it. That's the only choice you have. And we tried to ex I tried to explain last time, a lot of things that look like 0, 1 really aren't 0, 1. Right? They're really like continuous as long as you look, about, look at them in the right way. Like we said haircut. Getting your haircut's like 0, 1. You, you don't go in the barber and say, I'll take two haircuts. Right? That, that you don't happen. But the question is, it's easy to think of as a continuous choice if you think about how often you get your haircut. Right? I either get a cut once, you know, once every 28 days or 27 days. You know, you could even get it down to the minute if you wanted into how frequently you got your hair cut, right? And that I don't think is useful to think of a discrete choice problem, right? People see why thinking about a haircut as a discrete choice is really not the right way to think about the demand for haircuts. Because it is really something for which people can vary continuously without even talking about quality, just talking about frequency. You know, it's just, and it, it's the kind of good where you don't really consume the haircut anyway. It's like how well groomed do I want to stay and how often I cut my hair is something that's telling me how long, how often, how well groomed I want to be. So anyway, but no, let's think about a good that really is, you know, you want to be zero or one. And we can think about each person as having a cutoff. And that cutoff we can call VI for person I is the value they place on this good in dollars. So if this is the price, and this is the quantity, we could think of their demand curve as kind of looking like that. Really, the parts that are really well-defined are kind of this part. And then this, you can either think of this as horizontal, or you can dash it in, whatever you want. In keeping with our model, you really can't choose anything in there. so. At VI, we'd say you're indifferent. You're indifferent between buying the good or not, right? That's what we mean by indifferent. And it's easy to see, you know, why that would have to be the case, right? Because if you were, you know, if these things are kind of continuous in income, as long as they're continuous in income, you're going to have to be indifferent between those two points, just as well off one, one point or the other. Now you could think of VI as, is you could either think about it as the guy's the guy's true value, or you could just think about it as a choice, like we were saying before. Just think about it as an empirical value. This is the value at which he'll move, right? And we're inferring his VI, right? You could think about it either way. We can either say, look, this guy has value VI, and given he has value VI, this should be his demand curve. Or we could say, this is his demand curve. This is how I see him behave. And given that, I can infer his value as VI. Right? Those are just two ways of looking at the same problem. One's kind of more kind of saying, if I adopt the theory, this is how he'll behave. The other is, given how he behaves, this is how I will interpret it in terms of value. Okay. All right. So that's his demand curve. 